Hello! In this lesson, we will look at Wi-Fi and the development of wireless networks. It is hard to conceive of a time before Wi-Fi. We take for granted our wireless connections to the network or to the Internet using our laptop or handheld devices at leisure or at work. Our interconnectedness and the speed in which we can exchange information not only has made life more convenient, but has revolutionized our behaviors from the way we shop to the way we do business. The introduction of wireless technology has sped up business processes, more tightly integrated suppliers, distributors, partners, and customers, and has increased collaboration to unprecedented levels, realizing greater efficiencies. To users of this technology, Wi-Fi is so ubiquitous, so invisible to the eye, that is taken for granted. We request information or order an item online using our device, and it appears. We can receive or exchange information with a server halfway around the globe or with another person in a different continent as we stroll down Bourbon Street in New Orleans, shop at Hemley's on Regent Street in London, or sip coffee at the Café de Flore on Saint-Germain Boulevard in Paris. We sometimes forget that there is tangible hardware that makes all of this possible. We sometimes forget that this technology didn't exist a couple of decades ago. Before going further, we should ask an obvious question. What is Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is technology for the radio wireless local area networking of devices based on the IEEE 802.11 standards. IEEE which stands for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, was responsible for establishing many of the standards used by wireless technology today. Devices that can use Wi-Fi technologies include desktops, laptops, video games consoles, smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, digital audio players, cars, and modern printers. The people who wanted to bring wireless technology to market didn't think that the name IEEE 802.11 was very enticing, so they hired a brand consulting company that selected the name Wi-Fi. While not an abbreviation, it is a pun on the word hi-fi or high fidelity, a term associated with quality audio technology. But how and why was Wi-Fi technology developed? To answer the first part of this question, we must look to the development of the Ethernet. What is the Ethernet? It is a system that defines how digital information is passed between computers in a local area network. Although the Ethernet is typically associated with a wired network, ironically it was inspired by AlohaNet, the first public wireless packet data network developed by the University of Hawaii in 1971. Ethernet began as a series of computers joined by coaxial cables in either a bus or star topology. The protocol that controlled transmissions in the early Ethernet LAN was half-duplex, meaning that while it allowed the transmission of signals in both directions, it did not allow transmission simultaneously. It behaves similar to walkie-talkies. While one person is talking, the other person must listen. If both talk at the same time, their transmissions will clash and will cancel each other out. This is why persons who use wireless radios develop a vernacular to use this technology. For example, NATO armies use the word over at the end of a radio transmission to tell the receiver that they are done speaking. This computer networking scheme worked fine when there were only five or six computers connected, but when businesses began adding hundreds of workstations, it no longer worked. The Ethernet technology of the 1970s and 80s was not scalable. Fortunately, an Ethernet switch was introduced in 1989, which kept track of computer addresses and could deliver a message to the intended computer without resorting to a wide broadcast. Also, because it could segment computers into smaller groups, it reduced the chances of data collisions. This technology allowed the network to scale, but what has this to do with wireless local area networks? The development of wireless local area networks, or WLAN, leveraged many of the same protocols and technology as the Ethernet, and therefore shared many of the same limitations. However, the rise of the wireless LAN came about to solve a different problem. In 1988, 
CR Corporation and AT&T Corporation released WaveLAN, which was intended for use in cashier systems. They proposed that the simplicity of wireless technology be an alternative to existing wired networks, such as Ethernet, which required laying down wire and could be invasive to the existing structure of a building. Immediately, people recognized how another virtue of wireless, mobility, could be applied elsewhere, such as meeting rooms. However, before we could integrate wireless to a Ethernet LAN, we required the technology to do it. Wireless devices could not directly connect to a switch, unlike wired devices. We needed a bridge between the wireless endpoint device and the network switch. This bridge was the access point, or AP, a device that could communicate with wireless devices using the same radio frequencies. They then could translate these transmissions through the wire to the switch and to the rest of the network. Once this technology was in place, it became evident that it not only had many advantages, but was very scalable. APs have a range of about 20 meters, or 66 feet, indoors, and a greater range outdoors. Coverage could extend many square kilometers using multiple overlapping APs. With the advent of smaller portable computers, employees began taking their laptops to meetings. However, there were a limited number of ports in the conference rooms, and the tangle of Ethernet cables made it inconvenient. Businesses began installing access points in conference rooms. But as more and more people acquired laptops and other IP-enabled devices, such as voice over IP phones, demand rose to expand wireless coverage to the entire workspace. This logic and trend continued into our homes, airports, hotels, restaurants, coffee shops, and even cities. In 1993, AT&T completed their first large-scale installation of WaveLAN at Carnegie Mellon University. In 1998, the first wireless internet service provider, ISP, signed contracts with American Airlines, Hilton Hotels, and Starbucks to provide wireless services to those businesses. Initially, cost was an impediment to the growth of wireless, but as innovation reduced costs, adoption of the technology accelerated. Into the first decade of the 21st century, wireless mobile devices proliferated, encouraging more business and governments to extend services. In 2005, St. Cloud, Florida, and Sunnyvale, California, became the first two U.S. cities to offer citywide Wi-Fi services. In 2010, the mayor of London announced a similar ambition for his city. Thus, while Ethernet and WLAN were initially viewed as competitors, new technology like access points allowed them to merge and complement each other. Sometimes, a technological limitation or weakness posed an existential threat, such as the lack of scalability for Ethernet networks in the days before network switches. For wireless networks using the IEEE 802.11 standards, which were named Wi-Fi in 1999, this existential threat was security. Anyone with a wireless device and within range of a wireless network can attempt to access the network, and in the early days, the authentication and privacy mechanisms were very weak. By eavesdropping, a bad actor with the right equipment could break encryption in under a minute. Some authentication methods deployed did not require the WLAN client to provide any credentials. If not addressed, these weaknesses could have caused a reversal in Wi-Fi fortunes. Fortunately, in 2003, IEEE announced a new security protocol Wi-Fi Protected Access, or WPA, which marginally improved security. Then, less than a year later, the release of WPA2 made greater strides in wireless security. Not only did these improved security measures potentially save Wi-Fi from the dustbin of history, but it allowed it to continue to transform the way we live our lives. And more strides in security have been made in the last decade and a half. Wireless protocols and technology now enforce strong authentication. Access points now have onboard security measures, such as antivirus software, and can be fully integrated into other security devices, like firewalls. In addition, access points can be regularly and automatically updated with the
security information from a security internet provider. Fortinet's AP product is named FortiAP, and it has all of these features and more. Thank you for your time, and please remember to take the quiz that follows this lesson.